Choosing a home automation platform is an important decision and one that you will need to make right at the start of your journey into the home automation world. It's where all your smart devices will come together in a single unified experience and it will truly level up your smart home game and unlock features that you never thought possible before. Home Assistant, OpenHab, Domitix, Hubitat and Homeseer are just such a few platforms out there. So which one should we pick? Today we're pitching OpenHab head to head against Home Assistant to find out which one comes out on top. Let's take a look. These two platforms share much similarities. Both are open source, both can run on pretty much any hardware and run locally, both aim to unify all your devices under one roof, and amazingly, both are free. Of course, you can support both these projects in various ways, and I do encourage you to do so. OpenHab, or Open Home Automation Bus, was founded in 2010, is currently on release 2.5.7, and runs on Java, meaning it can pretty much run anywhere that JVM can. Home Assistant was founded in 2013, is currently on release 0.114 and runs on Python, meaning again, in theory, it can run anywhere that Python can. In order to put these two platforms head to head, I'm going to break this out into six categories. Installation, ease of use, supported devices, mobile apps, automations, and community slash update slash stability. I do want to mention that I am a long-term Home Assistant user myself. But I will do my best to keep my bias out of this and be completely as fair as possible. I also want to mention that I'm comparing these two systems from the point of view of a new user coming into the home automation world. Let's jump into the first part of any home automation, the installation. Both OpenHab and Home Assistant offer customized Raspberry Pi OSs as well as Docker images, making them immediately available on a wide variety of platforms. OpenHab also has install options for all the major Linux distributions through their package managers, as well as pre-compiled installs for macOS and Windows. Home Assistant offers virtual machine images through VHDs, VMDKs, VDIs, and OVAs, as well as some other customized images for other boards like Odroid and Intel Nux. Overall, both OpenHab and Home Assistant are available on pretty much any platform out there in one way or another. As far as the actual installations go, both are incredibly easy and can be done without much trouble at all in just a couple of minutes. Once the install's done, both platforms will land you at their respective UIs in order to complete the setup. Home Assistant will get you to create a user, set time and location and things like that, whereas OpenHab will ask you which UI you want to install, as well as other packages, which as you'll see later, I find a little frustrating. However, both setup and installation on both are incredibly easy, so no issues here. I'll give OpenHab the slight edge for installation. I like the fact that they provide pre-compiled installs for Windows, Mac and Linux, as well as all the other options. But as I say, neither will cause you any issue on the installation. In terms of ease of use, I feel Home Assistant by far has the edge here in terms of being a new user and the learning curve. OpenHab has quite a few key concepts that require the user to get familiar with, like the difference between items, channels, bindings, and things, to name a few. I feel it's unnecessarily overly complicated. For example, to add a single device in OpenHab, you have to go to the add-ons menu and install the add-on which you want, which is quick and easy. However, after that, things start to feel a little clunky to me. You then have to go and add a thing, which is like an entity in Home Assistant, then add a channel to the thing, then finally link your channel to your item before you can even have it appear on the dashboard. Now there is an option in the configuration to have it do that as a last step and automatically link the channel to the item, but that option is off by default if you choose the recommended option. So I do think it's really overly complicated for a new user. Home Assistant isn't without its complications for new users here either. In previous versions, you had to manually edit the YAML config files in order to add automations or devices to Home Assistant. Much of this has now been added to the Lovelace interface, which is excellent, but some devices can still only be added through the config files. This should get better as time goes on, but as it stands, it's still a little confusing for new users. Just take a look at this of how many steps it took to add a device to OpenHab compared to Home Assistant. OpenHab also ships with four user interfaces out of the box, which I found to be pretty confusing. One of them, Hab Panel, is pretty self-explanatory in that it's made for wall panels or tablets. 
However, the other three give you more or less functionality depending on which one you choose. You can add or remove user interfaces as you see fit. However, the whole concept of having different UIs for different functions I find to be pretty frustrating and probably the weakest point of OpenHab for me. For example, if you choose Paper UI, which is the recommended UI on setup, there is no way to do automations out of the box. However, if you choose Habmin, you will have access to automations immediately. But how is the user meant to know this at startup? You can install the Rule Engine add-on into Paper UI, which will give you access to do automations, but still, I find the whole thing particularly frustrating. To me, the term UI or user interface should mean a different look and feel to displaying the same information with all the same settings accessible regardless of the UI chosen. Having different settings and controls only be available in different user interfaces is an odd choice to me. I totally get that paper UI is meant to be simple and functional to the user without being confusing. However, I think a better way of doing this would be to add a toggle switch that would show or hide information depending on if the user is advanced or basic. That way you have consistent functional experience across all the different UIs with the only thing changing is the look and feel. I do however appreciate the ability to be able to install and customize UIs according to your taste. And I do appreciate paper UI simplicity, which is intended to be a simple place to control all of your devices. Having a UI that's optimized for a wall panel is also a nice touch. Home Assistant, by contrast, only has a single user interface called Lovelace. However, just because there's only one interface doesn't mean it's not customizable. Lovelace is incredibly customizable with themes that allow you to change the way it looks and feels, a wide range of cards that allow you to change the way that your devices are displayed, and it will play nice with virtually any display you can put it on. Both OpenHab and Home Assistant have discovery options, which will automatically attempt to discover and add your devices to the respective platforms. This can be super useful when adding loads of devices at once. I wasn't able to test OpenHab's implementation of this because nothing showed up, but this could be because of the way my network is structured or because I didn't have any compatible devices. But the documentation certainly indicates it should work. One small feature I did appreciate in OpenHab was the ability to click on any of the add-ons and it take you to the OpenHab description page where you can find all the options. A nice touch. I definitely have to give the ease of use section to Home Assistant. I think in OpenHab's attempt to create basic or advanced UIs has actually made things more difficult instead of simpler. Even adding devices in OpenHab is more difficult than it needs to be. Having a nice looking and easy to use home automation platform is all well and good. However, if it doesn't support any popular devices, what good is it? Fortunately, OpenHab and Home Assistant both have large amounts of supported devices with all the big names included. Home Assistant calls these devices integrations and lists the number of them right on their website and even breaks them down into individual categories for us. At the time of filming, Home Assistant currently supports 1,632 official integrations. I say official because there are community add-ons that you can install that probably takes this number up to about 2,000. Remember, add-ons in Home Assistant are not classed the same as add-ons in OpenHab. OpenHab's numbers are a little harder to work out. However, according to their website, there is currently 2,004 bindings with all the major platforms supported. All in all, it's great to see both platforms support such huge number of devices because everyone benefits from this. I'm going to give this one a tie. Both platforms support everything you could ever want and are constantly adding more and more all the time. Next up, let's talk mobile apps. Mobile apps are a huge part of the home automation world and both OpenHab and Home Assistant have Android and iOS apps. I'd like to preface this by saying that I am talking about the native or official mobile apps offered by both Home Assistant and OpenHab. Some of the things I'm going to talk about are available through third-party apps, but I'd like to focus on the official experience this time. Both platforms will allow you to view, connect and control all of your devices locally and remotely, as well as send notifications and use voice control. After that, they start to differ a little bit. Let's start by discussing a few of the additional features that Home Assistant offers that OpenHab currently doesn't. The first one being location tracking. Location tracking allows your device to periodically send its GPS location to Home Assistant, which is incredibly useful for using within automations. OpenHab does support GPS locations, except it's only through third-party apps, as far as I can tell, like OwnTracks. 
Home Assistant also supports actionable notifications, which allows the user to make a choice directly from the notification which the Home Assistant server will then act upon. Again, this is incredibly useful when coupled with automations. You can add or delete devices, configure automations and scripts, and change or edit dashboards, all from the mobile app, which I find really useful for when you're on the go. As far as I could tell, and please do correct me if I'm wrong, you cannot do this from the OpenHab app. The only other additional feature I found that OpenHab has that Home Assistant doesn't is the use of NFC tags. Using NFC tags within OpenHab allows you to assign certain functions to tags like control devices. Simply tap and hold the device you want to control, a menu will pop up and you simply scan the NFC tag. After that, you can scan and tag to control any device, a really excellent addition to the app. I definitely have to give the win to Home Assistant here. The additional functionality it commands and the far superior customizability pushes it far ahead in this aspect. Automations are becoming more and more important with these home automation platforms and it's easy to see why. Why do something yourself when you can have it happen automatically? Taking a look at the way OpenAB does automations, you have a couple of options. In Paper UI, you can install the Rules Engine add-on to give. Finally, because of the Lovelace interface, which we discussed earlier, you have access to fully configure and customize your Home Assistant instance, just as if you were on the desktop. You can create automations with a trigger, a condition, and an action. So all the things you really need. Home Assistant has a similar setup, which also allows you to quickly and easily create automations from the Lovelace UI, also with a trigger, condition, and action. Nice. Home Assistant does slightly edge out OpenHab here, because it has slightly more options for triggers, more granular control over conditions with and, or, or not, and slightly more options for actions. But again, both impressive options when it comes to this style of automation. For those of us that prefer, both can create automations through text editors or config files, and for those of us that are visual kind of people, both have the ability to add automations through drag and drop style editors. No dread on Home Assistant and Habmin on OpenHab. This is entirely subjective, but I personally find Node-RED a bit more intuitive with its linking style system. However, I was able to create an automation on Habmin without looking up any documentation whatsoever, so your mileage may vary on which one you prefer. I'm going to give the win to Home Assistant in the automation category due to it having a bit more customizability. However, both have excellent interfaces and options for automations, so I'm sure you won't be disappointed with either. Moving into the final category, let's take a look at the update cycle, community, and stability. Both OpenHab and Home Assistant have very large and active communities, which is great. Looking on the official OpenHab form, we can see that there are around 120 new topics created every week. Certainly a very active community. Home Assistant, by contrast, has around 530 new topics created per week, which is incredible. Taking a look through both forms, I'm pretty confident that any issue you have will be answered very quickly by both communities. In terms of updates, both are very active and again release very frequent updates. Home Assistant releases about every three weeks a major version with minor versions in between. And OpenHab currently has about a four week release cycle according to the last couple of releases. The final one is stability. I'd like to jump in and mention that I haven't tested OpenHab long term as I don't use it as a daily driver, so it wouldn't be fair for me to make judgment there. However, I did run into some minor niggles, none of them deal breaking, but I still thought I would let you know. The first one was this kind of annoying UI bug when installing add-ons. The spinning circle would sit there for ages and never stop spinning, yet refreshing the page would clearly show the add-on as successfully installed. There are a few other instances of UI issues I ran into also. Check out the mobile app in demo mode here and how these elements are all squashed together and unreadable. A couple of other bugs I ran into would just generate error messages with nothing helpful in them. Like this one where I created a rule in Habmin and then when I went to go back into it I couldn't delete it or edit it and it would just give me this generic error message in the bottom corner. Not a big deal at all but just something I thought was worth mentioning. By contrast, I've been running my current installation of Home Assistant for around one and a half years and I've updated to almost every release that's came out since then. The only issue I've ever ran into is where everything stopped working, but this turned out that the machine had actually run out of disk space, so this was self-inflicted. Again, both have excellent communities, are very well maintained and updated, so I don't think you'll be disappointed in this aspect. Once again, they are very close and I am going to disregard the stability aspect since I haven't been able to test OpenHab for the long term. 
but I think I'm going to give it to Home Assistant in this regard with the slightly larger community. So with all the information that we've ran through today, which one should you choose as your daily driver? For me, Home Assistant wins hands down when it comes to choosing between these two personally. OpenHab's unnecessary complexity ends up being its downfall for me personally. However, having said that, it is something that can be improved upon and I do want to keep checking in on the OpenHab project. I've been impressed with what I've seen so far. Whilst I do think Home Assistant is a superior choice personally, I do highly encourage you to check out both projects and see what both have to offer you. But which one gets your vote? I'm actually really interested to see which one you guys are using or which one you want to use. So be sure to let me know down below. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. That would help me out massively. Thank you again to all my supporters on Patreon and I will catch you in the next video.